What's up, you guys? It's Matt here. So I wanted to talk about debt in this one because debt is a huge killer of a lot of financial situations, a lot of marriages, um, just a lot of things. And you think about it, you have student loan debt, you have credit card debt, you have personal loan debt, you just have debt, 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 IOUs, you have all types of debt, really. And debt is a killer. So I wanted to talk about how you can avoid debt in this video. Um, recently, I did a video on how you can pay off debt faster, but I want you to avoid it entirely. That would be amazing if you can avoid it um, because then you won't have to worry about paying it off fast. You won't have to worry about interest charges. You won't have to worry about late payments. You won't have to worry about any of that. It's a lot better to avoid it than to have to pay it off quick. So we'll get into that in just a second. Make sure you hit the like button on this video. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And I do a giveaway every single week. I give away two Amazon gift cards. And if you want to know about that giveaway, stick around till the end of the video and you'll hear all about it. Now remember to subscribe to my Clips channel down in the description. Also check out the podcast um, up in the cards. And um, you know, I, I swear you'll love it. I hope you love it. I, I don't know. You might love it. But check it out. Um, it, we really appreciate it. Um, but let's go ahead and get into this video. So there are tons of ways that people have come up with to avoid debt. And um, I just wanted to talk about things that I see as a way to avoid debt because these are the big debt pieces that you need to avoid. Um, so we'll get into that right now. So the first way that you need to avoid debt is by picking a college for its curriculum, not for its name. Like you don't need to go to Brown University, you don't need to go to Harvard because you want to go to Harvard and you want the name behind, you know, your education, you want the name behind the way you talk, the way you hold yourself. No, you, you don't need that because the the more you fuel the fire, the more that people the more that these colleges are going to raise tuition and that's just going to be horrible for your situation. As the years go on, the tuition is going to uh, rise and you're just going to be paying a ton of money, way too much. That's how people get into hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt. And you don't want that. So what I typically did and what I still do is I pick a college based on its curriculum. I went to a tech school to basically get the knowledge of business. I then went to a private school, which was a little more on the expensive side. I could have went to a cheaper college there, but I went for the curriculum. They had a really good curriculum and I could work while I was getting my degrees. And then now I'm getting my master's program in a place that's um, local, but also a highly reputable school. So this is the thing that you want to do. You don't want to just say, all right, I'm going to Penn State or I'm going to uh, Princeton or I'm going to, you know, th these colleges that may cost, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 a year when you can find an education that's going to be just as good for $20,000 a year. Why do you need, you know, 50,000 more of debt? $50,000 more dollars of debt, that's just too much. I can't handle it. So pick a school based on its curriculum, based on the fact that, you know, you've seen people go there and they, they have a ton of knowledge and they have a great job, things like that. Um, so I don't like the fact that people just go to school for the name. The next way that you can avoid debt is by finding scholarship opportunities. This is something that I did um, throughout my you know, private school area. So when I went to a private college, um, I knew that I needed to get some sort of scholarship. So I only left that college when I finished with my two degrees, my uh, bachelor's in accounting and my bachelor's in business management. When I finished with both of those degrees, I only paid $24,000 in student loans. And that's all I have right now. Um, obviously, with my MBA program, it started to, you know, go up. But $24,000 for two bachelor's degrees is amazing. When people are going to, you know, Penn State for, what, $40,000 a year? Like, that's absolutely insane. Um, and I'm not saying that, I'm, don't quote me on that price, but people are going to these schools for thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year um, when you could just go to a, you know, cheaper school. But let me, let me digress there. The point of this, of number two, is to find scholarships. There are a ton of scholarships out there, and I found a ton of scholarships um, to where I can get a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars, whatever you can get, take it. And there are websites out there that will give you different scholarships um, for certain things, even things you don't have to do anything for. You know, you can be, you know, a Native American, or you can be, you know, 
a different race or you can be a basketball player. You can, if you do a certain thing or you just have a physical trait, they'll give you a scholarship sometimes. So that's what I'm talking about. Finding a scholarship that not only, you know, you have to physically do something like write an essay, but also find a scholarship that, you know, they'll give you for just being you. There are a ton of scholarship opportunities out there. And I know because I missed out on a ton um, throughout my first two years in the tech school. I missed out on a ton. I could have had a lot. And there are people out there that have millions of dollars worth of scholarship money. And just because they found opportunities that other people couldn't find. Next thing you could do is create a budget. Create a budget at least once. The reason why you need to create a budget at least once is because when you create a budget, you write down all of your bills and you know exactly how much you're paying. Then you could also know how much you're bringing in as well. And if you do that, if you do the simple math, then you can understand exactly how much you'll have left over and what's going towards unnecessary things. Just a mental picture. So if you do it one time, it's very easy. But most people think you have, to, you have to maintain a budget per month. It depends how tight your budget is. Yes, you maintain a budget per month. There are people that do it per day. But um, it's recommended that you do it per month, but at least do it one time because then you'll know exactly how much you have to pay in that year, how much you have to pay in that month. And it'll be a ballpark, but you'll be able to understand the the ballpark of where your expenses are and the ballpark of where your income is and then find how much you're going to have left to spend in other areas. Because if you don't have anything left, then you can't spend money. But some people see the money in their bank account and they spend the money because they never did a budget. So create a budget. Budgets are very easy. Um, they have tons of templates online. Templates or templates? Templates online. Um, on Microsoft Office actually, and you can find that template and just um, build your budget very easily. The next one is simple, just don't overspend. You have money, don't overspend. Some people get caught up with credit cards and they spend all their money on credit cards, but then they don't know how much they have left because they have all this money in their bank account and they haven't paid off their credit cards yet and then they forget about one or two and then they're just like, oh wow, you know what? I'll pay the minimum payment and I'll get to it next month. That's not how you want to think about it. You don't want to get to it next month because you might not have enough left over to get to it next month and then you have to get to it the next month after that. So don't overspend. The next thing you could do um, or not do is don't use your credit cards as emergency funds. Seriously, don't do it. There's a lot of people out there that do it and you shouldn't have that. Now, there are cases to where you didn't save enough and you may have to use your credit card, but if that's the case, you always have a plan to pay it off. If, if you have a plan to pay off your credit cards, like say you knew exactly how much you had to pay on this and you're gonna pay three months of $100 um, and you're gonna pay off that full balance, then do that. But you have to have a plan and you can't just say, you know, I'm gonna put this all on my credit card, you know, $3,000 on my credit card and I'll pay it off whenever I get to it. I'll pay the minimum payment until it's paid off. You're gonna be paying for like 27 years um, and that's not an exaggeration. It might be even more than that. So you're gonna be paying for a long time if you're just paying the minimum payment because a lot of it's gonna come out in interest and you're just gonna keep paying a small amount of principal with a lot of interest. So be careful. Um, don't use it as an emergency fund, but if you physically have to, always have a plan. And the last thing is don't live above your means. There's a, a ton of people out there that have a great paying job, but then they spend just as much as they make because they just want to keep up with the amount that they're making. They want to improve their living habits because other people around them have improved living habits. You don't have to do that based on how everybody else is living. Um, don't overspend, don't live above your means. If you do all of that stuff, you're just gonna find yourself in a horrible situation in debt and it's just not gonna be a good look for you. It seriously isn't. Um, I've come to realize sometimes that you know I just shouldn't spend money on some things. I can't say that I have the money even though I do because technically I don't, if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you, then um, I don't know what to say. But you shouldn't live above your means because if you do, then it absolutely hurts you. And I don't like seeing people in pain, especially financial pain. That just is a burden on everybody's life, on marriages, on all things that are out there. It's just a burden. So, you know, do all of these things or don't do some of these things. Make sure you follow the list 
um, do's and don'ts, I guess. But those are all the ways that I come up with to avoid debt. Now, there are more ways out there and you can research more ways, um, but these are the main ways that you need to avoid debt. They're going to come up with, you know, come up with a budget. You need to make sure you have that budget in place. Budgets are essential to at least build once. Seriously, I built my budget and sometimes I slack on my budget, but I always know how much we have in expenses and I always know how much we have in income during the month. Um, and if you know that, then it just helps you out in a big way. So follow all of these steps and I hope that it helps you out. I hope that, you know, the person that asked me to do this video, I hope this really helps you out in the long run. I know you said you didn't have debt. Um, and I don't want you to ever have debt. So make sure you follow these steps and also include some other steps in there because you may have something that works for you. So if something works for you better than the things that work for me, then go for it. Um, so that's my video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. It helps me out a lot if you do. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And I do a giveaway every single week. I give away two Amazon gift cards at the end of the week. And if you want to enter that giveaway, um, make sure you comment on at least one video for this week, like at least one video for this week, and also be subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you do all those things and you get one ticket in the hat, but if you want multiple tickets, then just comment on multiple videos. But like I said, that's my video. Um, make sure you check out the podcast that's filmed right behind me. You know, we spend a lot of time filming that podcast and also the clips channel. I can't stress it enough. Click on the link down below, get to the clips channel, subscribe to that channel because it helps us out. And we want to get that channel to a thousand subscribers um, as quick as possible. Views are growing. We want to get it to a thousand subscribers. So make sure you check out that channel, subscribe to that. We'll have We'll improve as things go along. Right now, the audio is an issue, um, but we'll figure it out. So make sure you check it out. Um, I really appreciate it. Also, check out the full podcast. It'll be up in the cards. Um, but like I said, that's my video. Hopefully, you avoid debt, but I'm going to have to get out of here. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.